billions of people across the world use the internet to be entertained, to exchange news and gossip. But many rely on access to the internet for education, health and safety. There are more than 600 million active internet connections in India. Online access is now recognized as a human right. And yet, in India, the government cuts off the internet to millions of its citizens on a regular basis. Lives of more than 2.5 million students were affected. From blocking the World Wide Web to banning smartphone apps, no other democracy in the world shuts down the internet like India. You can't shut down the internet to quell a protest. It's very undemocratic. The Indian government claims the shutdowns are essential tools in national security. So we have a duty to protect lives of people in the best way we think is possible. But who pays the price? We are still unable to gauge the human cost of this internet shutdown. And do the ends justify the means? For the people who live in the most remote regions of Jammu and Kashmir, accessing healthcare is a life-threatening challenge. Villagers here have no access to well-equipped hospitals or specialists. That's why cardiologist Dr. Hafiz set up Save Heart Kashmir. Based in Srinagar, the largest city in Kashmir, he uses WhatsApp to offer diagnosis and suggest treatments to doctors in those remote villages online. So we were around 1,200 doctors on board. So it was like a virtual ER, doctors at periphery posting ECGs and we managing them uh, and advising them on WhatsApp. Using WhatsApp, doctors in faraway villages upload reports and experts on the group offer life-saving proposals for treatments. So this is how we did it. You see, we got an ECG, this is a patient who had a heart attack going on. We responded within two minutes. The main aim was to manage the time sense to cardiac emergency, where time is paramount. You lose time, you lose muscle, and overall your prognosis goes down. We have this patient, is a 65 years old male. He came with history of chest pain. This is the ECG of this patient. Kindly have a look, sir. This is a case of inferior wall MI. Okay, do one thing, thrombolize him, and take care. He is in a critical condition. We can lose him. Save Heart was a success. Dr. Hafiz and his colleagues respond to at least 50 requests a day. Together, they've saved nearly 20,000 patients in Jammu and Kashmir since the group's inception in 2017. But in August 2019, everything changes in Jammu and Kashmir. India's Home Minister announced today that it would scrap Article 370. Yeah, is now deciding to Kashmir. revoke Article 370 of the Indian Constitution. Revoking the special status of Kashmir with immediate effect. For 72 years, the state of Jammu and Kashmir had enjoyed a special status. A special clause in the Indian Constitution gave it a semi-autonomous status. It followed its own constitution had a separate flag and administrative autonomy, despite being a part of India. But in August 2019, India stripped the territory of that special status, and it split the state into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir to the west, and Ladakh to the east, both under direct rule from the central government. Along with the move, India sends in thousands of troops into the region to clamp down on any possible unrest. It also pulls the plug on the internet to stop insurgents from rallying the people on social media. But the move cuts a lifeline. It all came to zero. We had nothing. We could not communicate. As far as the cardiac care, definitely. It must have affected many people. Nobody can tell how many patients would have died or how many patients came with a heart attack that time. But definitely, expert care, it got affected. It wasn't helplessness, but that was not up to us. That was a government's prerogative. What to do? They had a security situation here. This is the you know, worst communication blockade that has ever happened in Kashmir. Fahad Shah runs an online magazine, The Kashmirwala. 
The shutdown brings his work to a grinding halt. Here in the website, we couldn't publish anything because we didn't have access. But as I also write for other publications outside India, so I had to reach out to my editors and there was no way. It was, you know, like we used to go to the airport and the, in airport there was one line working and that's where we used to check over email for five, six minutes and then understand what was happening. The government sets up an internet center with four computers for all the journalists of Kashmir. Every day, over 200 journalists need to wait for their turn. That was a huge mess because, you know, you need to wait in the queue, you need to put your name and then you need to wait and you would just get 10 minutes and then you need to finish your work, file your story and then check whatever news or anything you could check and leave. The world is connected through internet. We do meetings on internet, we do everything on internet. A lot of people lost jobs, a lot of companies had to shut down because of the losses that they faced. The shutdown lasts five months, devastating Kashmir's economy. Shaving off one-tenth of the region's GDP, or 2.4 billion US dollars. An estimated half a million people lose their jobs. Tourism, a key industry, is hard hit. The sector accounts for at least 8% of Kashmir's economy. Over 450,000 Kashmiris are dependent on the sector for their livelihoods. Abdul Rashid is one of them. He owns two houseboats on Dal Lake, popular among tourists. Internet Online booking late the internet ke through karte the sab kuch wo expensive nahi hota tha. But jab se band ho gaya internet tab se bhot problem hai aage. To sab tourists sunchte agar hum wahan aaye kuch ho jayega. Iski wajah se nahi aare. The internet shutdown makes online bookings impossible. Coupled with security concerns, tourist arrivals drop by 90%. The August lockdown comes as Kashmir enters peak tourist season. Normally, Abdul's houseboats would be fully booked during this period. But now, they lie empty. Abdul's bookings have dropped to zero. 2,700 boats. How much of the loss is going to be with the tourists? They have lost it. The economic pain triggers a lawsuit against the Indian government. In March 2020, India's highest court orders the Indian government to switch the internet back on. The government does so. It imposes severe limitations. Just 80 businesses are allowed to reconnect to wired broadband, and they must permit the government to monitor how they're using the internet. We were told to give in written that will not give the connection to someone else, will not use pen drives, only your staff could use it, and only the whitelisted websites could be used. But in a region as vast as Kashmir, few people are connected to wired broadband. It is also unaffordable. Most people here usually rely on the 4G mobile network. But in the months following the court order, the Indian government got around the ruling to restore the internet by allowing only the 2G network to operate. It is painfully slow. Compared to 4G, it takes 50 times longer to download a high-resolution photo on 2G. Video streaming and video conferencing are practically impossible. The government argues that slowing connection speeds would stop insurgents from using the internet to ferment unrest. Right about the same time, the COVID-19 pandemic reaches Kashmir. An inconvenience turns into a catastrophe. COVID lockdown started, I think, uh, end of March in Kashmir. And at that time, internet was not really working properly. So people obviously were not getting enough information about what was happening in Kashmir. In March 2020, 
reports emerge of the first cases of COVID-19 in the Kashmir region. It comes at a time when the region is still recovering from a 168-day-long internet blackout. The internet is back, but frustratingly slow, because many have to rely on the 2G mobile network. Fighting an unknown disease and unable to download information quickly, both ordinary folks and doctors are at a loss for what to do. By April, the alarm bells start ringing. Jammu and Kashmir is among the regions with the highest density of COVID-19 cases in the country. COVID had started by, I think, end of December. There were a lot of videos, precautions, and what you can do and what you don't have to do. That kind of stuff people couldn't obviously access because there wasn't internet. Doctors were not able to connect with the senior doctors abroad. They were not able to connect with their resources that they have, which they can access through internet. Because COVID is a new disease, doctors desperately need guidance, fast. But they find themselves crippled by the speed. Some doctors working in intensive care units find themselves struggling for hours to download guidelines for COVID-19. In some of the hospitals, in some of the sector, there were high-speed internet working, so people could use that. But then it is also a point of privilege, like where you are based, who you are, which doctor you are. If you're running a clinic and you can't afford a high-speed internet connection, or if there is no service there and you were using cell phone internet, you can't really access those services. The internet slowdown imposed by the Indian government impacted education too. This is a region of India desperately short of teachers. Adeline Syed is a student training to be a teacher. With 2G, she struggles to complete even the simplest assignments. We have to upload our assignments, the assignments that teachers gave to us. Internal assessment was done on that basis. They gave us assignment on Google Classroom. It took 15 to 16 minutes to download a single page. We are not able to update our phones. We are not able to download e-learning app. I'm on the 2G speed. We have to keep our phone on for a full night and one app is downloaded. The children she gives private tuitions to are even worse hit. Teachers are taking Zoom classes, but there is connectivity issue. In 40-minute class, what happens? 20 minutes go waste in connecting, reconnecting on this 2G speed. So it becomes necessity for them to take private tuitions to complete their syllabus. It's a burden for their parents as well. The plight of the children of Kashmir spurs community leaders like Jian Va, president of the Private Schools Association, to persuade the government to restore high-speed 4G internet. All the education softwares, apps were 4G based or more than that. Our students were not able to fill up even the farms because the speed is so low. We wrote to Chief Secretary, but we got disappointing answers that it's all in the hands of the PMO or the Union Home Ministry. We can't do anything. He decides to pursue the matter in the highest court of the country, the Supreme Court. He files a case against the Union Secretary of the Central Government who is responsible for deciding to keep the speed throttled at 2G. But to our utmost disappointment, to our shock, finally when the Supreme Court decided the case, the division bench ordered the Union Home Secretary will head a committee to examine the matter. It means that the very government against whom they are fighting is appointed to make a decision on whether high-speed internet should be restored. Children and COVID-19 sufferers are not the only casualties. Violence against women is endemic in Kashmir. Here, women depend greatly on internet access to seek protection and help. We are still unable to gauge the human cost of this internet shutdown. Ashi Qureshi is the co-founder of Mehram, a non-governmental organization which helps women in distress. So most of the cases that we work with are uh, cases of domestic violence. 
It can be uh, domestic violence cases in the marriage and in their natal homes. So basically, uh, a lot of times the women we work with are in absolute distress. For them, even to make that one call is very difficult because usually the perpetrator is somewhere around them and if they're caught making that call, it aggravates the situation for them only. In that situation, they are entirely dependent on a WhatsApp that they can send or send us a text over Facebook or something like that. And when you have internet cut down, they're not able to make that one simple text to anybody. The COVID-19 lockdown has made matters worse. Trapped with their abusers, Kashmiri women have few options to seek help. A quick response is critical for the women Arshi helps. Faced with a sense of helplessness, the risk of these women committing suicide is high. We only got to know about such cases after the incident of violence had happened to them. So helping them in that one moment was not at all possible for us for a lot of cases. Afri was a victim of domestic abuse. She succeeded in annulling her marriage to her violent husband. Now, with Arshi's help, she's fighting for financial support from her husband. But because of the internet shutdown, her court case is in limbo as the Indian judiciary moves online because of COVID-19. Without 4G, Afreen can barely access the court proceedings. To make matters worse, she relies on an IP-based telecom service, which means without the internet, she can't make voice calls. Women like Afri depend on women's organizations to pay rent and buy food and medicine. The money is usually sent via online banking. With internet access throttled, charities find themselves unable to send the money out. If payments are delayed, women like Afreen and the children will go hungry. What's more, many vulnerable women live in areas that the government considers at risk from insurgents. In these areas, even the slow 2G connection is cut off frequently. There are times when we have to wait for a date for a simple transaction to happen. For me, it might just seem more time taking, but for the women that we work with, this time means a lot more than that. But former army general and security expert Satish Dua feels the government's move to throttle the internet and sometimes shut it down is necessary to protect the lives of citizens. In recent years, he's seen insurgents using the internet to fan unrest and embolden their recruits. In 2015, 10 young men posted their picture with weapons on a Facebook page. And they openly uh, came out with their names, their identities, and that marked a turning point. They created a Robin Hood kind of image for Burhan Wani. Between 2010 and 2016, Burhan Wani, a young militant, became massively popular in Kashmir and actively recruited many supporters for a militant separatist movement through social media. They started using social media not only for this kind of uh, narrative, but they also use social media to mobilize people for stone pelting or even block security forces. They would put out uh, video clips of uh, clerics or uh, other such leaders exhorting the youth to fight for the cause and how they would be rewarded in heaven. They would uh, bring out some clips trying to show how the security forces were uh, perpetrating cruelties on, on people, which were either fake or something uh, happened in the past, sometimes not even connected to the valley. By the time security forces could react and somebody could put out a rebuttal, let's say take a couple of days, and you know uh, how things go viral on social media. According to Dua, the government became a lot more worried when Burhan Wani was killed by government troops in 2016. After the elimination of Burhan Wani, 
there was a huge outpouring on the streets. This led to violence on the streets almost inevitably, which led to firing of tear gas and pellet guns by the police. And this would lead to casualties. It was decided that we would shut off the internet. That was done only with the interest of public at heart. The first long shutdown in Kashmir in 2016 lasted 133 days. Then in 2019, the Indian government revoked Kashmir's semi-autonomous status and shut down the internet again. The 2019 Kashmir blackout was the longest to date, but not an isolated case. The internet is shut down frequently in other parts of India as well, leading the country to top the world rankings for internet blackouts. In 2018, India accounts for over two-thirds of all internet shutdowns globally. You know, you might think that this is a minor thing, but when you look at these students from Kashmir who've lost educational opportunities, whose scholarships have been, they, they have no use of their scholarships and their exams. Human rights activist Radhika and her colleagues have been tracking internet shutdowns across India for eight years. Shutdowns are mostly very, very hyper-local, which means that they might be happening in a very small district or even in like sub-districts. It gets impossible, you know, to report a shutdown. So there are various things that we do to collect information about internet shutdowns. One, that we have research assistants in various states, local newspapers, because a lot of times shutdowns are too small for a national media to report. We constantly like follow Twitter every time we feel that there is an agitation happening or there is going to be uh, like a curfew or something. We know that in most cases there is a shutdown forthcoming. Radhika's data is alarming. She found that aside from Jammu and Kashmir, internet shutdowns are also occurring in 14 other states. And the shutdowns are taking place more frequently, often without oversight. If you can see the map, you can see that there were three shutdowns that we began with in 2012 and then like they exploded. By November 2020, uh, the number was 441 shutdowns in total with 73 shutdowns happening during a pandemic year. Why is the Indian government so fond of shutting down the internet? And why does it use this strategy? In some cases, the reasons for a shutdown are surprising. For Kashmir, the reasons are entirely different than the rest of India. For a lot of places like Rajasthan, recently in Arunachal Pradesh, in West Bengal, there have been shutdowns to prevent cheating in exams. During protests and riots, they want to shut down the internet to prevent the spread of fake rumours. In India, there are over 400 million users of social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp. And these platforms have been used to spread hate and fake news with deadly results. India has become the global leader in internet shutdowns. The government argues that controlling the internet is necessary for public safety and to curb the spread of hate speech on social media. The government points to the explosive rise in net users over the past few years and a spike in incidents of hate speech spreading on social media. In some cases, these spikes lead to violence and murder. June 2018, Tripura State in northeastern India. A spate of rumors spread through WhatsApp warns villagers of outsiders abducting children and stealing their organs. The story is fake. But as the messages reach more and more people, violence explodes. Zahid Khan, a salesman from another state, is supposedly identified as an abductor. mob of hundreds of villagers beat him to death. WhatsApp rumors, widowed Shama. The killing of Zahid Khan 
is just the first in a succession of killings linked to a spike in hate speech on WhatsApp. Hate speech spread on the internet has caused many people in India to be victimized. Natasha Badwar works for Karwane Mohabat, an NGO which provides legal aid to victims of these hate crimes. Nobody knows where they started, why they started. But the landscape of India was dotted with news of mob lynchings, all based on a baseless rumor. That's the power of uh, WhatsApp networks and Facebook networks. They're not restricted geographically. And a forward that actually starts in one place will months later reach another place and seem like it's an urgent forward, you know, that it's something that's happening right then. So that's the kind of toxic power that social media can have if it is left uncontrolled. Natasha recognizes that for many of India's rural poor, the internet promised liberation. And for millions of people, that promise was fulfilled, but at a terrible cost for others. It's really tragic because we all remember just a couple of years ago, we were celebrating the power of the digital medium in the hands of uh, you know the rural poor, of people who are even illiterate because digital media does not require literacy. It's even voice enabled. And yet, while the medium for information became smoother and smoother with smartphones becoming cheaper, with data plans making access to the internet very, very cheap, what people are consuming through that medium seems to be a lot of disinformation and fake news with no tools in their hands to be able to tell what is real versus what is not. In 2018, internet shutdowns jumped to 134 compared to 79 the previous year. But Natasha Badwa believes that internet shutdowns cannot be the go-to measure for controlling fake news. There are many, many ways in which the government can control the media without becoming authoritarian. You can shut down particular websites temporarily. You can actually make it a punishable offense to be caught spreading disinformation. Sudesh Verma, a spokesperson for India's ruling party, the BJP, feels filtering out disinformation is more difficult than it seems. Like say for WhatsApp message comes, I forward it. I may not be knowing actually the impact of or from where it is coming. I'm just forwarding it. Spreading disinformation and fake news is a punishable offense under Indian law. But when disinformation goes viral, enforcing the law becomes impossible. So one way is that you arrest everyone. It is big chaos that is going to happen or the other way is you shut down the way it is being spread. December 2019. The Indian government passes a controversial citizenship bill. The bill seeks to accept illegal migrants fleeing religious persecution from three neighboring Muslim majority countries as citizens. But the bill sparks widespread protests. Some criticized the bill for discriminating against Muslims, for failing to include those migrants. Others fear the bill with its requirements for certain documents would render them stateless. The internet is aflame with anti-government messages, sparking huge protests across India. The government acts fast and shuts down the internet across nine states. 60 million Indian citizens are cut off from the internet. For the first time, the internet is also shut down in some parts of Delhi for five hours. Protesters are unable to share ground images and videos or even share locations. Thousands of Delhi residents who are a part of the peaceful protest are outraged. A colleague of mine, her mother is in emergency, she's in the ICU. They had to reach Gurgaon 
They've closed down the roads to reach Gurgaon. There's no internet to communicate what's happening. It's total turmoil and this is totally anti-citizen. This is not how a state is supposed to treat their citizen. Under the Indian constitution, citizens can assemble peacefully and without arms under the fundamental right to the freedom of speech and expression. You can't shut down the internet to quell a protest. It's very undemocratic, right? One of the most cited reasons is public emergency and public safety. Do protests fall in that ambit of public emergency or public safety? But the government insists that public security has to be the priority. So we have a duty to protect lives of people in the best way we think is possible. And that movement of emotion, which can lead to violence, you know, if you can prevent that, then that's uh, a good thing for society uh, by and large. But Radhika and her colleagues discover another issue with the shutdown order. It may have flouted legal procedure. The internet shutdown was ordered by the Deputy Commissioner of Police, who's not an authorized agent, according to the rules which lay down the procedure for shutting down the internet. Technically, this makes the order illegal. According to a law that lays out the procedure of a shutdown, only the highest officials of the country at the union and state level are authorized to hit the kill switch for public safety or public emergency, not the police. This order needs to be then reviewed by a committee within a few days to evaluate if the shutdown was indeed necessary. The only time the order can be passed by the second highest rung of officials, the Joint Secretary, is in an emergency when the authorized officials are not available. But digital rights activist Appa Gupta has experienced it otherwise. We have practically seen in our own experience that very junior officers within the political executive or even police officials have been delegated these duties. And what that practically manifests itself in turning off the internet rather than ensuring adequate policing. When an internet shutdown order is issued, it's supposed to be put up on the central or state ministry website. This ensures that the public knows who has issued the order and why it has been issued. People can challenge the order if they feel their rights have been violated. But most of the time, these orders are never put up on the sites. This means that government decisions to issue shutdown orders are hard to contest and digital blackouts are becoming increasingly frequent. And that's not all. Authorities are finding other ways to tighten their control on their netizens. From throttling speeds to blocking sites to shutting down sites, India frequently denies its netizens access to the World Wide Web. Restrictions to the net have come in different forms. In 2020, the Indian government moved into banning some smartphone apps in the name of national security. In May 2020, border flare-ups with China led India to ban 59 Chinese apps in a bid to control data leaks outside the country. TikTok, a social media app, was one of them. The music clips available on the app allow users to lip-sync, dance and make memes on their phones. It was hugely popular in India and made video stars of the poor and marginalized. It was easy money for those who turned it into a business. Ritik, a college student, had pinned his dreams of becoming a TikTok star. His earnings from TikTok was a much needed source of income for his family. family help daily use groceries Ritik invested in expensive equipment to raise the quality of his TikTok clips in the hopes of boosting his following 
and in turn his earnings from the app jo maine earning kari wo invest karke tiktok ke liye kara jaise maine is phone se panasonic wale phone se maine start kara tha fir maine ye iphone purchase kiya aur fir ye mera computer kaam nahi karta tha matlab bilkul bhi फिर मैंने इसको ठीक करवाया थोड़ा मैंने सोचा कि हाँ इस लाइन में बहुत आगे बहुत कुछ है मतलब तो मैंने इस पे ध्यान दिया तो ये अचानक ही ये बंदी हो गया तो मतलब ये बहुत बुरा हुआ द बैन वॉज अ ब्लो टू मेनी ऑफ द सिक्स हंड्रेड मिलियन इंडियन आफ्टर द बैन ऑन स्मार्ट फोन एप्स द गवर्नमेंट सेट इट साइट ऑन वेबसाइट क्रिटिकल ऑफ नेशनल पॉलिसीज अमंग दोज टारगेटेड were environmental websites that were campaigning against new draft policies proposing the deregulation of access to natural resources they activated a online campaigning mechanism in which emails were sent to the environmental minister and due to the volume of emails uh, it was reported that a complaint was made by his office to the cyber crime cell of the delhi police which then in turn issued a legal notice to the domain providers and the hosts of these websites such as fridays for future india to block the website domain uh, through which these petitions were sent the government blocked three environmental groups and even accused them of terrorism as an advocate for internet freedom gupta got ready to counter attack we represented them legally this notice also had reference to a anti terrorism law this actually rattled these young school children who quite often come without pronounced political opinion with respect to preference for a political party or b political party in fact a lot of them support the present government they just thought that they were fulfilling their constitutional duties towards protecting the ecology these are much younger adults or if not children they first sometimes had very very anxious and uh, innocent sounding questions towards us as lawyers what will my parents say am i a terrorist a website is usually blocked if there is obscenity infringement of intellectual property and defamation in this case it was none of the above this kind of censorship is not fitting within the conception of the internet being a platform for empowerment discovery the move to block the three websites was slammed on social media and in the press under pressure the officials reversed the digital blockade and withdrew the accusation of terrorism the outcome towards this was positive but it is worrying uh because uh it shows that there's a increased level of resistance to citizen participation especially through digital advocacy tools beyond curtailing civil liberties and disrupting lives restrictions on the net have been costly for india in 2020 india saw nearly 1700 hours of internet shutdowns and 7000 hours of bandwidth throttling which cost the economy 2.8 billion us dollars apa gupta is litigating on behalf of the foundation of media professionals a group that is fighting against the blanket ban of high speed internet in jammu and kashmir on the basis that it violates human rights his appeal to the supreme court is based on the legal doctrine called proportionality proportionality essentially says to swat a fly you will not completely fumigate an entire town you need to essentially go and do it in a targeted manner because the restriction on the liberty of a person needs to only match the justification and it should not be excessive the government's justifications for internet shutdowns as a means to stop insurgents is also coming under scrutiny what typically happened is you know you've got the internet uh, you've got a set of malicious actors in a normal scenario when the internet is working this flow of uh, information is unobstructed now let's say that the government decide that there is a certain scenario where they feel that they need to cut down the internet right? yeah, typically this is to target your malicious actors or your bad faith actors uh you either want them to not be able to carry out the task they're carrying out or you want to prevent them from getting some information at the same time what's also happening is that your everyday user is also using 
the internet for their various uh, their various tasks as time expands or you use this tactic periodically right uh, what happens in that case is that your malicious uh, bad faith actors know that this is a tool in your toolkit right so they will typically uh, evolve their methods to work around it as you use uh, an intervention like this repeatedly the net benefit reduces very sharply in august 2020 gupta's litigations yield some result the supreme court orders high speed 4g mobile internet to be introduced on a trial basis in two districts of jammu and kashmir but gupta is not about to stop fighting the case 4G needs to be restored all across Jammu and Kashmir and limited possibly in certain restricts and pockets rather than as a blanket shutdown in 90% of the geographical area of Jammu and Kashmir even as the battle for 4G in Jammu and Kashmir is in full throttle the residents are learning how to work around the slow 2G network local kashmiri techy tipu sultan wani is creating alternatives for the banned chinese apps he's created an alternative to tiktok ye jo application hai iska naam hai new cooler iska jo feature hai ek to iske 4k videos hain wo hai optimize this app for uh, 2g also kyunki mainly jo yahan ke pe jo government hai wo snap karti hai pehle kuch bhi ho to wo internet hi snap karti hai ab ye jo internet jab band hota hai to matlab we feel separated मतलब हमें लगता है कि मतलब वी आर डिटैच फ्रॉम अदर पार्ट ऑफ वर्ल्ड तो वो नहीं होना चाहिए मतलब अगर यहाँ पे मतलब टैलेंट है यहाँ पे उसकी तो कोई कमी नहीं है बट यू नीड टू फ्लरिश मतलब टैलेंट जब तक वो फ्लरिश नहीं करेंगे हम टैलेंट वो आगे नहीं जा सकेगा it just slows down the pace of your life entirely slows down the pace of your work you can't even open anything any browser page on your laptop if at all i have to do any work i have to make sure that it's a light version of a website that i can access over mobile phone i can't even think of accessing websites that i would as a researcher need to access with these continuous bans and the internet getting shut it also adds to the hopelessness of the people because younger people are like let's just move out somewhere else and in the longer run it will obviously impact the development of this region because then we will not have more talented people in kashmir it will be around 19 months children without internet so they violated this fundamental right of the students and deprived them of their right to education I think uh, the children of Kashmir are much much left behind than other students from other states from other countries and digital rights activists continue to drive their point home internet is never just social media internet is biometric verification through internet internet is students attending classes all of us lived on online payments courts are functioning to through video conferencing that needs internet right specifically during a pandemic i think that the importance of internet has come out much stronger than ever before digital rights are not considered that important even when everybody is dependent on that the world's most populous democracy and growing technological powerhouse india has the potential to be the leading light in democratic technological norms but instead it's emerging to be a leader in autocratic restrictions on the internet and there is no sign that the indian government is prepared to rethink its strategy so it seems dichotomous at one level the government wants india to be truly digital india but here's the thing you can't say that this revolutionary technology will only have x amount of functions because it is fundamentally designed to unlock human potential it is distributed it resists censorship it relies on self learning and it also demands a higher degree of public accountability from officials the political executive needs to recognize that the innovation which will come about will be in a way which is organic sometimes unstructured and not to its political vision it's not that uh, 
we are jumping at you know the thought of shutting down internet because internet drives the economy now but there are people who are interested in creating problems in society we are a conflict ridden society and a small spark can cause a lot of trouble unless you know we can devise a way uh, by where you know we can uh, shut down the interaction between terrorists and their master sitting somewhere and allow people to access the net but you have to uh, accept that we have no way out at the end of january 2021 thousands of farmers came to delhi to demonstrate against a new law citing the need to maintain public safety and to avert a public emergency the government cuts off internet access in delhi once again